From masked menaces at the center of psychological thrillers to sinister sociopathic slasher icons, Hollywood has a weird obsession with serial slaughterers. Filmmakers just love trying their hand at sculpting the next household name in horror. But unleashing the monster lurking underneath a character's skin often means making bizarre and questionable decisions. And not just tapping Vince Vaughn for the Psycho remake. Let's take a look at some of the creepiest things that went down on the sets of serial killer movies. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre changed the face of both horror and independent film. Its pseudo-documentarian narration, over-the-top brutality, and completely fabricated based on a true story claim cemented its place in the pantheon of great horror cinema. One of the film's most intense and nearly unwatchable sequences is the dinner scene. What makes it so brutal? Well, during filming, even the actors themselves were beginning to lose touch with reality. Bad news for a movie with a dude swinging around a real-life chainsaw. The scene took over a day to shoot, the set was unbearably hot, and the actors had to take Dramamine breaks to get over the smell of rancid meat. Leatherface even accidentally sliced actress Marilyn Burns' finger open on camera after a prop busted. We say Leatherface rather than actor Gunnar Hansen because, at this point, the 6'4 man beneath the mask thought he was actually there to take out Burns. Yup. The screams, the deranged laughter, and the terror of that scene were as close to real as it gets. While it might have led to some truly unforgettable cinema, we're pretty sure that the cast and crew just wanted to have a few cold ones and forget that day ever happened. Zodiac David Fincher is a notoriously difficult director to work with. While filming 2007's critically acclaimed Zodiac, he pushed his actors to new extremes, averaging a mind-boggling 70 takes per scene. With all that footage to work with, he then got sadistic delight out of torturing actors like Jake Gyllenhaal by deleting hours of said takes right in front of him, just to see if he could make him cry over it. But Gyllenhaal wasn't the only subject of Fincher's torment. The director himself reported that Robert Downey Jr. reached such extreme levels of passive aggressiveness that he left jars of his own urine around the set in protest. We're, uh, not quite sure about the cause-effect logic of that reaction, but one thing's for sure. We don't want to tick off Robert Downey Jr. enough to find out. Gross, man. Halloween One of the quintessential slasher films, 1978's Halloween is unique in that the villain is basically a blank slate. He's not supernatural, he never says a word, and his backstory doesn't reveal much of anything as far as motivation. He's just an extremely broken person in a bleached-out William Shatner mask getting a stab on. It's part of the horror. You can't reason with him or outthink him. You just have to keep running. Meanwhile, he lumbers just behind with his distinctive gait. That gait of his arrived purely by chance. Nick Castle was a friend of director John Carpenter and found himself just sort of hanging around on set watching his friend work. When it came time to start filming scenes with the iconic villain, Carpenter told Castle to slap on the mask and get in there because apparently he had the perfect walk. Castle seems to have a pretty good sense of humor about the whole thing, considering his close friend pretty much told him he walks like a movie monster. American Psycho Examining it in context, American Psycho is a very strange product of a very strange time. Based on Brett Easton Ellis' novel of the same name, and filmed by feminist director Mary Heron, it pulled genuine humor out of the macabre social commentary of its source material while retaining a tasteful amount of gore. But Christian Bale's incredible performance as the charmingly dead-eyed Patrick Bateman is what really sealed the deal. A decent portion of the film sees Bateman hiring bored prostitutes, who begrudgingly render their services before meeting untimely ends. To prepare for these scenes, Bale and Heron watched a lot of <clears throat> adult entertainment together. That sort of employee-manager relationship should have led to a series of HR complaints, but on the American Psycho set, it merely added to the absurdity of the final product. House of Wax Besides being the film that paid up on its advertised promise that you could watch Paris die, House of Wax is an otherwise forgettable remake of an old Vincent Price horror film. It's a shame, really, because Alicia Cuthbert really gave that film her all. In a scene where she is captured and has her mouth glued shut, she had them actually super glue her lips together. In other words, that scene where she painfully peels her mouth open? Also real. Poor Cuthbert also had trouble with the ending of the film, fighting her way out of the titular house as it burned down. The melted wax she found herself wading through was actually a pool of peanut butter. We know what you're thinking, but no, she wasn't allergic. 
She did, however, get stuck in the stuff a whole lot. 7. Let's face it, Alien 3 didn't do much for David Fincher's career. It wasn't until the premiere of Seven that moviegoers really started to take him seriously as a director. The creepy thriller starred Kevin Spacey as a methodical and meticulous serial killer arranging crime scenes in accordance with the seven deadly sins. And trust us, it's not a film you want to jump into after a large spaghetti dinner or after an unexpected delivery. Oh, what's in the box? Not till you give me the What's gun. in the f***ing box? While Seven is known for its grisly crime scenes, it's also recognized for its production mishaps. While filming a chase scene, Brad Pitt slipped on the hood of a car and smashed his arm through its windshield. Rather than call it a day, Fincher wrote the injury into the movie, and Pitt wore his actual cast throughout the filming, keeping it off-screen in scenes that precede the injury. And then there's actor Gene Borkin, who played the corpse Greed. Apparently, Borkin didn't realize he would have to be naked in his scene. Right there, on set, he renegotiated his pay and still convinced them to at least let him wear underwear. Heidi Shantz, who played Pride, found herself pretty amused by how much Fincher seemed to enjoy dousing her with fake blood. She remarked as much, and Fincher, deadpan, replied, I have demons you can't even imagine. Damn, Fincher, you're kinda creepy. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you love too.